Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for another very special edition of WOW's Alive with our host, Ned Dennison. Ned? Hello, everyone. I'm the chairperson of the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. It's a double pleasure for me today. This is the first time I've spoken directly with Christine and, and, and seen her, which is a, a, a thrill. Christine, um, you are one of the only honorees in the Hall of Fame with both a father and a daughter. So please say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Um, tell us about growing up in Quebec, the, the hotbed of open water swimming. Um, your daughter, Robert Cosette, uh, uh, honoree, surrounded by his uh, Quebec-based friends and the superstar marathon swimmers from coming all over the world. Did, did you attend big races as a child? Do you have memories of, of being you know, nine years old and meeting all these people? Of course I do, because there were many swims in Quebec and my father was involved as a swimmer and as a coach. So at a very young age, I started going to these marathons and uh, I saw, I knew all the people, the big names of that time, like Abouif and uh, all those swimmers. So for me, it was something uh, natural. I've always heard about swimming and the marathons. So that's, that's what brought me to swimming. And did you realize you were, you were part of the Royal Open Water Quebec family? You were royalty. You were the daughter of Rose, Robert Cosette. That's a big word, <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> who, who taught you to swim? I think I started swimming just being on the beach and pulling myself on the sand and uh, I've always seen people swimming so I just started swimming like that. And were you a Something champion? Were you a champion pool swimmer? Yeah, so, uh, yes, but uh, we used to spend uh, our summer uh, in Lake St. John and different lakes and uh, started swimming. And, and was it um, inevitable that you were going to become uh, uh, an elite open water swimmer or did you have other options at age 16? You wanted to be an actress or you wanted to be a cowboy or did it just always going to be a swimmer? I didn't know what I wanted to, to be. And uh, in fact, that year I, st I stopped swimming. And I remember we were on May 1st and my father was... Uh, talking with Pierre Bourdon, a news uh, reporter. And uh, they were talking about Lake St. John and I said, I'd like to do that swim. My father just told me, well, just train and do it. So I started training. It was uh, the first of me. And then uh, that year I became the first uh, Quebec female swimmer to do it. And I didn't know I was the first Quebec woman, woman to do it. And uh, I was also the youngest one to do it. So it just started right off and um, I became the swimmer. I, I started becoming the swimmer I came. Do you have any memories of that swim? Uh, were, you, were you nervous to start? Did you, did you look around and see, you know, Cindy Nicholas and say, ah, she's a superstar or were these just people you knew and you were swimming against? Uh, I've never swam with, um, with these people and it was my longest swim and I didn't know what to expect. And what was particular that year is that they had a new rule. We were 27 swimmer to start. And after the, the Riviere Peribanca, the 5K, they would keep only 20 swimmers. So seven swimmers I had to get out. And uh, I think I passed, I was 28. So, uh, and then once that was uh, okay, I just went for the swim. And, and I was kind of, because, I thought it would take longer than uh, I did it in eight hours, 53. And uh, I knew the, the time limit was 10 hours. So all along I was asking how much time left, how much time left. 
when it went well. And you remember the smile on your father's face when his daughter finished the swim? Probably I had the biggest, bigger, bigger smile than I had. Yeah. <laughs> so that was 1978. Um, two yeah. years later, you had three big wins in 1980. Um, you, uh, you won the women's swim in Lac Saint Jean. Um, you won Memphis Magog, and um, you became the the World Professional Marathon Swimming Federation World Champion in 1980. Probably Atlantic City uh, also. And I think that year we went to Egypt. So, and there was also the, the Bé des Chaleurs uh, from New Brunswick to Quebec. And that was uh, one of the swim uh, that I won at that year too. And were you, were you training particularly hard that winter? Uh, why were you so successful in 1980? Well, hard to say. Maybe I was uh, more confident. Uh, I was 18, so um, probably I'd um, improved my swimming. And that was uh, the time when you, you had this idea for, or, or there was the idea for the double Lex and Jean was coming up. Was it, was it your idea? How, how did this come about? Absolutely, my father uh, has always been there for me, um, but he never forced me or put anything into my head, like that was my ID. And when I first uh, came up with it uh, and I told him, he didn't say a word, a word. And a week later, he asked me, were you serious about that? I said, of course I, I, I was. So I said, well, then if you're serious, we're gonna organize it. And uh, all I had to do is uh, make sure I had my, my cap, my goggles and my swimsuit and it would take care of all the rest. So I was pretty lucky. And I think I owe a big part of my success to him, but he never forced me or anything like that. And in your head, how, how did you prepare for this? And the reason I ask is, we spoke to the honorary Brazilian Igor de Souza. Before he did the English Channel, he said in the year before, everything was two parts. He would have half of his dinner, and he would have the second half of his dinner. He would go to the store and back. So in his mind, everything was in two parts. Did, did you have things like that you were preparing in your head? No, not really. All, um, I wanted to swim at night. So that's something I had dream, And I would see myself swimming at night with big lights. And that's, that's about it. But the thing is that uh, I thought about go going for the English Channel, but um, we had a pretty um, busy summer with all the swims up here. And um, I thought if I go to, for the English Channel, so many people have done it. So we'd go for something special, whether a double crossing or something like that. And I thought, I go there uh, when I can do something here. So that's why I decided to do the, the double crossing. And what time of the day did you start your crossing? Was it was that was the at night your night. first? You, you started at night, and finished in the day. So I have yeah. on my sheet eighteen hours and twenty seven minutes. Tell us about the physical and mental difficulties. Did you know? Did things hurt? Did you want to quit? Um, oh, it hurts all the time. Anyway, after six hours, it hurts. After eight, it hurts. After ten, it hurts. So just eight more. But what uh, was surprised is the time it took me to get to Peribanca. Uh, I was expecting something faster. And I realized that the current in the river and uh, the whole current in the lake made it uh, slower to go to Peribanca than coming back. 
And the three times I did the crossing, the three times I had about 30 minutes faster in coming back. So and that, that surprised me because uh, like after eight hours, uh, I, I thought I would be in Peribonka, but no, I was just at the beginning of the river and I had five more kilometers to go up the river. So that, but the th once I touched Peribonka, it was like, Okay, now I'm getting closer to where I'm going. <laughs> and people talk about making the turn. Um, did you get to the end and say, no, no, it, 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 it starts now? Or did you say, okay, I've done half and I'm going to celebrate half. How did you, in your head, handle this? No, this I thought it was starting then because uh, I knew I could do the, 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 the first part. Now the second part was, now I'm swimming. Now I'm getting into my double crossing. So Lex and Jean in, in Quebec open water swimming is this, um, is this mythical monster. It's, it's, it's the swim. It's the swim everybody wants to do, everyone wants to win. And here you are, a young girl, you've done the double. What was the reaction in Quebec in the open water swimming community? Well, that was something big, and I remember, well, first at the, at the start, when I got on the, the dock, I was surprised to see all the people there, and I thought, what are they doing here? And said, they're here to see you jump in the water, yes, but there's nothing to see, you know, <laughs> I was not, uh, I didn't realize what I was doing, you know. Probably because of my background that I, I saw the, the, the swimmers and it was something normal for me. Like I remember the, one of the first amateur swim, it was a five mile swim in Roberval. And um, well, out of the swim, the, I felt like there was, there were nobody in the water and I thought, well, gosh, they are all finished and I'm still swimming. And, uh, and then I finished second, the first, and first, uh, in the first female. And Pierre Bourdon asked me, how did you find swimming in cold water? I said, why? Was it cold? It was 58 and I didn't realize. So I was uh, good in cold water. So that's, that's what helped me in Lake St. John. I mean, it's Lake St. John is usually, usually around 64, sometimes 62. So I was a cold water swimmer. It was your swimming pool. It's where you grew up? Yeah. No, but I, I didn't train in Lake St. John very often because we didn't have a boat. So I was swimming in a small lake, uh, half a kilometer long, and I would do many laps in that swim, in that lake. And uh, once a year, my father would get a small boat and would go for a longer swim, uh, three, five, six hours, something like that with the boat to get use of swimming and following the boat. But I wouldn't swim in Lake St. John that often. And were the newspapers full of your swim the next day? Of course. <laughs> was all, all over the news. You were famous. Yeah. yeah. And another big smile from your father, maybe? Yeah, probably bigger, bigger than mine. <laughs> Tell us about the it trip was, to Egypt. Was this your first time out of Canada? I know I've traveled with my parents when I was younger. I've been to Europe and uh, different places. And your, your memories of the, of, the, of the swim in Egypt, was it one of the Nile swims or the Suez swim? All of them, all of them. The water was dirty, was uh, very special, yeah. And, and during your elite swimming career, um, who were your friends on this circuit? Who, who were you closest to other swimmers? Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, 
But the time I was uh, closed with uh, Yoka Van Staveren, she came to my place and she could see me. I remember that. Um, I was pretty doing my things. Uh, I don't know, hard to see. And when you uh, stopped as an elite swimmer, did you did you keep swimming? Did you coach? Did you follow the the sport? Yeah, for a few years I swam with the, the master, and I coached also uh, master swimming. And uh, but uh, it was difficult to keep up because. Uh, well, I was a single mother, and my son was, uh, he got involved in two sports, so he's an um, elite athlete. He was, uh, well, he practiced uh, speed skating, and uh, he, he was on the Canadian track cycling team for five years, so he, he took me a lot of time and energy to follow with him. And did you watch uh, Richard Wienerberger of Canada get the bronze medal in the 2012 Olympics? And did you wonder if the Olympics had been around when you were still swimming? You wonder if you would have been in it? Oh, yeah, I wonder. But I guess more swimmer would have been there, would be have been harder to qualify. And it would have been 10K, not, not, not 64K. No, no. I think that, that that's my thing is big, big swims. Yeah. And I think I could have done more than that because I wasn't that tired when I finished that swim. I could have keep going. Um, after you did the double in Lake Saint Jean, it, it became offered as a standard race uh, with only a few swimmers every year. Do you remember the first time it was a race? Um, I think it was probably Abu Ife and, and Nasser El Shali or and, um, a few others. Uh, the, the first double crossing as a race? Yes. You mean? Yes, I remember uh, that was in 85. I knew Monique Wilschot was there, Paul Asmert, Claudio, maybe Nasser Shazli. But I, no, I didn't finish that one. Uh, okay. I got cold. So they pulled me out after, um, well, I was coming back. It was maybe I had 40K done. Mm. Monique says she got very cold um, and she wanted to get out, but she, she, she gave us a new expression. She said it would have been double dumb. She said, first, it was dumb to swim a double, and it would have been double dumb to get out three quarters done, uh, which I just, I smiled well, at the I expression. remember I got on a boat, and I saw her, and uh, all I saw, she was blue all over. She was blue. Yeah. Uh, Christine, you're, you're now retired. Will we see more of you in, in smaller swimmers, swims, some competitions now? Is it time to come back? Well, I think about it. I think about it. It's, I don't know. Maybe I'd like to do something. Nice 5K in the south of France in the summer when it's warm, sun is shining. Or maybe I'd like to do Lake St. John for my 60th birthday. Uh, I'm not for okay. my, okay. in my When I'll be 60. I don't know. We, we, oh, we, we look to forward to that, Christine. Goodbye. We're going to hold uh -huh. you to that. We're holding you to that. Age 60. Steve Munitonis will start the publicity campaign. No, no, you, no, no, no. Yes, yes. No, Lots I of won't. attention. We will talk to the local newspapers. No. We'll raise hundreds of thousands of, of Canadian dollars for charity, and you will be a superstar again. Well. <laughs> Just say yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, Christine, I want, to, I want to thank you very much for your time today. It's, it's finally nice to see you and speak to you in person. And we wish you all the best with your future plans, whatever they might be. Thank you very much.